Let's look at the five talking points from this week in football. Bayern Munich are just two wins away from lifting the Bundesliga title again. Having smashed Bayer Leverkusen four goals to two at the Bay Arena. But then, that's not really interesting. No, the interesting part of Bayern's performance concerns Thomas Müller. And how in setting up both Robert Lewandowski and the newly jacked Leon Goretzka, he has become the Bundesliga's new assist king. His 20 assists in 2019-20, the most ever by a single player in a single season. Well, the most since detailed data collection began almost 30 years ago. And to think, it wasn't that long ago Müller was being heavily criticised. Joachim Love dropped him from the German national team in early 2019. And even Bayern were trying out replacements with James Rodriguez's two-year loan from Real Madrid in 2017 and Philippe Coutinho's loan from Barcelona this season. Sadly, the yellow card Müller picked up against Leverkusen will see him suspended for Mönchengladbach's visit to the Allianz this week. But that still leaves him three matches to extend his assist record even further. And with it, his legend. Thomas Müller wasn't the only history maker in Bayern's 4-2 win over Bayer. As in scoring Leverkusen's second, Florian Wirtz became the youngest scorer in the Bundesliga at just 17 years and 34 days. It came just 20 days after he took over from prodigious talent Kai Havertz as Leverkusen's youngest ever debutant the guy his manager and teammates are now comparing him to. With Alexander Dragovic saying, the lad has a lot of potential, and if he keeps his feet on the ground, he could be another Kai Havertz. And that is great news for Leverkusen, considering Havertz looks destined to depart the Bay Arena in the upcoming transfer window, with Liverpool, Manchester United, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Chelsea and Bayern Munich all in hot pursuit. So Bayer are going to need someone to step into his boots. And even if Havertz does fetch in excess of 100 million euros as is expected, who better to replace him than someone Bayer already have on their books? Not a week goes by without Borussia Dortmund's Jadon Sancho making headlines. Only last week, it wasn't so much for what he did on the pitch. Even though his performance in the 1-0 win over Hertha Berlin was nothing short of outstanding, rather it was because the DFB slapped him with a fine for getting a haircut in his home, breaching Germany's social distancing restrictions. <laughs> Can nicht alles kontrollieren. I can't control everything, but he is young. We were all young, 18, 19, 20 and so on. And it's clear that he shouldn't do this, but yeah, that's how it is. Sancho himself, in a tweet that was later deleted, called the fine an absolute joke. And he was backed up by the executive director of the World Players Association. Ongoing education, ongoing collaboration, ongoing demonstration of mutual good faith is the way in which we're going to get through this. The same good faith that saw many players take significant um, financial uh, reductions to enable sport to uh, resume. Yeah, so hot is Sancho right now, in some people's eyes, he really can do no wrong. There was good and bad news for Barcelona this week. While they announced that Uruguayan striker Luis Suarez has been cleared by team doctors to play when the Spanish league resumes, Lionel Messi trained alone in an empty new camp. Suffering from a minor right quadriceps injury, it's doubtful the Argentine will start the game against Mallorca. 
Of course, a Messi-less Barca is completely different to a Barca with Messi. But it could actually turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Because did you know that Messi holds the record for the most goals as a sub in La Liga with 24? Such is his prowess, you really don't think of Messi being a super sub. I prefer to always have Messi on the pitch. Let's see what happens. But then on the other hand, he's actually the most super sub of all. No surprise here, Kylian Mbappe has been named the most valuable player in Europe. But what is surprising about the list that was drawn up by the CIES Football Observatory is who joined the World Cup winner in the top five. With the other four being English. In Manchester City's Raheem Sterling, Borussia Dortmund's Jadon Sancho, Liverpool's Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Manchester United's Marcus Rashford. The list doesn't only take performance into account, but also economic factors, such as how long is left on their contract and age. Which would be why Barcelona's Lionel Messi only comes in at 22nd, and Juve's Cristiano Ronaldo is all the way down in 70th. The guy is 35 after all. But what it clearly doesn't take into account is a player's propensity to choke at a major tournament. Because if it did, there's no chance anyone who's donned a Three Lions jersey in recent years would be anywhere near the top 20, let alone the top five. Thanks for watching. For more great content on all things football, make sure you hit the subscribe button.